All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to show you how to calculate line integrals with respect to x and y. And later I'll give you an awesome interpretation of this. So, for instance, let's calculate the line integral. Wow, very much nicer uh, black marker. Okay, the integral of y dx plus x squared dy, where c is the following character. Um, following curve, the arc of circle from 2, 0 to 0, 2 and counterclockwise. So we like counterclockwise directions here. And here the orientation matters. If I told you clockwise, it would be minus the answer. So, first, as usual in multivariable calculus, let's draw a nice picture. So you have this arc of circle starting at 2, 0 and going to 0, 2 in this direction. The question is, what is this? It's actually pretty abstract. It'll make sense a little bit later on when we'll do vector fields. So, but for now, let's just calculate it as if it's this abstract thing. And just as usual uh, for multivariable calculus and vector calculus, the first thing you want to do is parameterize the curve. So here, thinking in terms of polar coordinates, if you have a circle of radius 2, the parametrization becomes 2 cosine t and 2 sine t. And t goes from 0 to pi over 2. And that's because we have a quarter of a circle. If it were the full circle, it would be from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, and now here's what I meant with deal with this just abstractly without knowing what this means. Well, now let's calculate this thing. Integral of y dx plus x squared dy. Again, we don't know what this means, but what helped us last time with line integrals of functions over curves was indeed the Chen loop. Namely, what helped us is that we wrote dx as dx over dt times dt. So let's just do this again. dx over dt times dt and dy over dt times dt. And the nice thing is those have independent meaning because what this becomes, it's the integral from something to something of y of t x prime of t plus x of t squared y prime of t dt. And again, this is a very, very important uh, uh, observation. This will also help us later for vector fields. Now, everything is in terms of t, so it's good to put you know, t values at the endpoints. And in this case, because we have the quarter circle, t is from 0 to pi over 2. So we do that. And then you just plug in x of t and y of t. So y of t is 2 sine of t. x of t is 2 cosine t, but if you differentiate this, you get minus 2 sine t. x of t squared becomes 4 cosine squared t. And lastly, y prime of t is just 2 cosine t. So 2 cosine t, dt. And so what you end up with are two very nasty integrals. We get minus 4 
integral from 0 to pi over 2 sine squared t dt plus 8 integral from 0 to pi over 2 uh, cosine cubed t dt. And yes, you got to roll up your calculus sleeves. Fortunately, I have short sleeves today. <laughs> and let's calculate those two integrals. First, let's start with this one. Integral from 0 to pi over 2, sine squared t dt. And in fact, there is a YouTube video about this if you want to watch it. Um, but essentially, the idea is you start with cosine of 2t, you write this in cosine squared minus sine squared, and you write cosine squared as 1 minus sine squared, and you can solve for sine squared, and in the end, what you end up with is sine squared of t is 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2t dt. And that becomes 1 half t minus so cosine becomes sine of 2t. We still not have that 1 half, but we have an extra factor of 1 half from the Chen Lu. So 1 half times 1 half from 0 to pi over 2. And what you end up with is, so t equals to pi over 2 becomes pi over 4 minus 1 quarter sine of pi or well, sine of pi is 0, minus 1 quarter sine of 0 is 0, so you just have pi over 4. I wrote it wrong in my notes, but luckily I double checked. Okay, very good. And lastly, we just have to evaluate the other thing, the cosine cubed of t. And again, this is a usual single variable calculus trick. This power is odd, which means you isolate one of the factors of cosine. So it's like on the chopping block. Cosine squared of t, cosine of t dt. It's like the sacrificial lamp because it disappears. So we would like to use u equals to sine of t. But for this, we need to write this in terms of sine. So 1 minus sine squared of t, cosine t dt. Okay, and if you want, you just use a, a substitution, u equals to sine of t, then uh, yeah. uh, du is cosine of t dt, u of 0 is 0, u of pi over 2 is 1, so sine of pi over 2. So we get integral from 0 to 1, 1 minus u squared du, and that just becomes u minus 1 third u cubed from 0 to 1, and that's 1 minus 1 third, and that's 2 thirds. Great, and we're almost done. Because we find that this thing is pi over 4, this thing is 2 thirds, so the answer becomes minus 4 times pi over 4 plus 8 times 2 thirds, and I think you get minus pi uh, so, uh, plus 16 thirds. Okay, so again, this is how to calculate a line integral with respect to x and y. Essentially, you replace dx by x prime and dy by y prime, and you do the whole shebang. Now, let me explain you what this means. So, the problem is they usually motivate this by physics, but honestly, I, as a mathematician, I don't understand physics. So let me give you a more mathematical way of figuring this out. And for this, again, suppose you have a curve. 
c and some function above it. Let me use some colors. This will be useful. So this is f. And remember, suppose it's in the x, y, z plane. x, y, z. Now, remember what the line integral with respect to ds was? It was just the area under that fence. f, ds. But look, suppose this is a fence or this is a wall. It has two shadows. One, we have the shadow in the x, z plane. So, in other words, if you take this wall and you squish it on the x, z plane, then, well, the function looks something like that. And again, if this is a point f of x, t, y, t, well, even if you squish it, for a given t, the height is still f of x, t, y, t. That's one thing. However, what the curve becomes, it just becomes a straight line, like here. And essentially, what is the area under that curve? It's really the area. Look, the heights are still the same. So it's still integral of f of x, y. But with respect to x, so not just with respect to ds, which is the diagonal thing, but really with respect to x. So in general, if you have a function, let's say p, and you integrate it with respect to x, it gives you the area of that shadow in the xz plane. And of course, you can play the same spiel with uh, the yz plane. So if you take that shadow, if you, sorry, if you take that wall and you just squish it on the yz plane, then you get something like that. You see, the height is still f of x, t, y, t. But the base is not ds, but it becomes dy. So you see, same height, but different base. And this area would be integral of f of x, y, dy. So here it's an integral of f with respect to x, integral of f with respect to y. And essentially what we did today, we just combined the two. So what this weird symbol is, integral of y dx plus x squared dy, that's really the line integral of y dx plus the line integral of x squared dy. So what you calculated very easily, I have to say, is that the x shadow of the function y plus the y shadow of the function x squared. So this is really cool. Or if you like physics, you can do the force in the x direction plus the force in the y direction, whatever. And just a little like, cliffhanger for next time. It turns out we can write this very conveniently as vector fields. So next time, not with the same example, but it turns out this is the same as simply integrating the vector field over the same curve, but where f is just a vector field with those two components. And as I said, I'll talk more about that next time. Uh, all right, so if you like this and you want to see more multivariable extravaganza or more math in general, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.